join um, today's call. So what we have on the call today, um, I have my co-host, uh, Joyce. She's joining us from Vancouver. She is also a hollow body and 10X coach. Um, we have Patrick, who is also a hollow body and 10X coach to come here and give us a little bit of a male perspective since you know, you know my uh, focus is really mainly on uh, women uh, in perimenopause and 60 plus. And uh, so he's gonna be here to talk a little bit about uh, his experience. And I have my two clients here, oh my goodness, who are here <laughs> to uh, give us some of their time and share their experiences uh, with us uh, uh, that they have gone through with me uh, today. And so um, without further ado, I will start my presentation. So let me uh, share my screen. Everyone's okay seeing the yep. slides? Okay. So, um, well, I call my practice Longevity with Nancy, okay? And then um, my website is followthejrabbit.com. You can find my services, you can find my contact information, social media, everything on there, and, and including testimonials from my clients. And before we start, you know, the first thing to ask is about, you know, why you're embarking on a program, um, you know, related to health. You know, what is your why? Why are you you here? What do you intend to do when you you know are joining any health and fitness or nutrition program? So that's something to really think about. And uh, <clears throat> and I would say, you know, for most of us who want to join something or do something, is because we want to take back take back more control in our lives and, and want to perhaps better our health you know, have uh, better eating habits, uh, to learn better exercise routines that will work for us. And uh, it's all about self-care, right? And I, I wanna share this slide here. It's because it's so important that we put our own oxygen mask on, right? First, before we can help our loved ones, so rather than going and doing, especially for a lot of moms, you know, uh, parents who are always there, you know, just wanting to help our family and really put ourselves last. So, you know, I, I would applaud you when you're, you know, coming uh, to listen to my talk or, you know, trying to learn more about health, nutrition, fitness. You're all really trying to take some time to do more self-care so that you can better help other people and, and your loved ones. And this is back to longevity, why I'm basing my practice on longevity. You know, literal meaning of longevity is about you know, a long life, right? But when you look up really what longevity is and the synonyms, there's so many, there's consistency, perseverance, endurance, lastingness, and more. So to me, longevity is not really just about living a long life. Because really, when we look at life expectancy now, you know, I think the average age is about 78. Most of us really can live a fairly long life or, or even longer. But what kind of life do you want to lead until the very last moment uh, of your life, especially during the morbidity years, like the marginal decade? You know, that's what they're called before you uh, pass away. Um, so longevity is my the basis for my practice. And for me, again, it's to live a healthy uh, active, vibrant, and high quality life from uh, free from harm for as long as I can, since I can't predict what's going to happen like the next moment, you know, right? I could be hit by a bus or something, who, who knows? But how can you live your day to day in a way that will bring you more joy and more confidence and, you know, in, able to really enjoy your experience on, on planet Earth in this lifetime? And now just to tell you a little bit about my story. So um, how I started everything, it wasn't really just because of them, but you know, while I was going through the process of reflection about people who have influenced me, you know, they're my, my two grandmothers really. Um, you know, you can see on the left-hand side of the photo, that's my grandmother. She was receiving her uh, centenarian award in Taiwan uh, when she turned a hundred. Uh, she passed away uh, just last year. Well almost just over a year, because in uh, the end of 2021, she passed away at the age of 103 um, and really at home in her sleep quite, quite peacefully. And um, so, and, the, um, and on the right-hand side, 
for those who are able to join now, I apologize for, you know, if you're not able to join through the link, um, I'm recording uh, this presentation that I will send out after so that you have a chance to listen to it uh, if you need to. Um, anyway, I, I'm just talking about people who have uh, really inspired me in my life uh, before, you know, um, that that's how I based on, uh, based my practice on. And so, I, I spoke about my my grandmother who passed away 103, you know, at home peacefully in her sleep. And then the, the, on the right hand side of the photo is my grandmother who was actually 90 this year, um, and she's actually been half paralyzed for more than 20 years from multiple strokes. And now um, she can't eat. She has a liquid diet. She can. She's half paralyzed, so she can't bathe herself. Uh, she needs people's help to like kind of flip her in the middle of the night, you know, make sure that she's still breathing. Um, she doesn't talk. So we really don't know where she is um, cognitively because even the doctors can't quite uh, assess everything either, right? If she's not able to even communicate, she could be quite conscious. We just have no way of knowing. Um, and and the, the difference, the biggest difference uh, between the two of them is that you know, while my grandmother on the right hand side, she is still living and she is 90. Uh, that's a long life already, but her quality of life is <clears throat> not there, right? She needs help constantly and she can't even communicate and she's on a liquid diet. And she led a life that was what we would have probably everyone thought was like great. You know, she she created her own uh, like a female organization and she um was a social butterfly. She like uh, my grandmother, you know, because my grandfather was a uh, government official in, in in Taiwan. So she never had to work in a way, but she was a very strong woman, uh, ambitious woman. She did all kinds of things. She would look good. She wear she had truck truckloads of clothes. I would say <laughs> um, she would eat anything that's like tasty, uh, spiciest, sauciest, everything that people would contribute as good life. You know, luxury um things that taste good doesn't matter drink wine whatever like she really wanted to live a full life i guess everyone can say that's what it was she didn't like lifting her fingers even in terms of like going for a walk she never really wanted to do any kind of exercise um but anything that would taste good make her feel good temporarily she definitely indulged in all of that <clears throat> but then look at her later quality of life uh, uh years of quality of life and then whereas my grandmother on the left hand side, she really lived a very simple life in the rural area of Taiwan that, you know, she rode her bike until the uh, late 90s, until she kind of fell and broke her hips. Um, I wish I had known even earlier to teach her about resistance training, but I didn't know then. Um, but even with a walker, she was fiercely independent, like she still did everything. She still cooked, She like, you know, with a walker and passed away peacefully in her sleep. So it really showed me that, you know, how you live your life now every day is so important and it would contribute to how uh, you will live your life in your later years, you know, when you really don't um, want to be so dependent on medication and, you know, other people for help, because that's what my 103 grandmother didn't do. She was still quite independent. And the, another story I'm sharing is about my mom. Um, she's 70 uh, this year. She was diagnosed with osteoporosis, diabetes, high blood pressure, and she only started resistance training um, last year or, or like a year and a half ago. And, uh, but I have helped her. Uh, obviously they were first, my first guinea pigs. I helped my dad too, he's in the, in the picture, but I, this is more of a female point of view. So um, with my dad, I'll just talk briefly that you know, he actually had two back surgeries, um, but during recovery and while I was helping him with uh, diet and then just doing some resistance training, he soon after the two back surgeries, you know, started to play golf again. And then with my mom, you know, she would, she's pretty slim to begin with. So, you know, having the diabetes di uh, diagnosis was like a shock to her. Um, but working with her, you know, we realized she was consuming way, things that she thought was healthy um, was actually not, which were fruits actually, you know, um, living in Taiwan now because they're looking after my grandmother, living in Taiwan now, the abundance of fruit. And it was like 24 seven, that's something that she would eat. And then there's something that people would have after meals and then like a huge bountiful plate 
full of fruit. So she's cut down on that. But anyway, so I've helped her uh, uh, reduce her and, and re actually remove some of the medications for her diabetes and high blood pressure. And she's doing the workouts, you know, at home. And she started working out at the gym as well with resistance training. So she she's not as weak anymore because uh, I, I felt her bones before she felt quite weak. She is stronger uh, now as well and feel better. Like she can do more things rather than the doom and gloom. This is, you know, something that runs in the family. I can never change this. She managed to change that, change her condition. Now it's my own story. I'm a mom of two. Um, you can see in the photo on the left-hand side, it was just a typical representation of what, you know, your uh, spine would look like, but on the right hand side, it's mine. You can see I have curvature in my spine. So I have scoliosis, uh, scoliosis, and I suffer from uh, chronic back pain for a long time. I used to seek the help of chiropractor, uh, massage therapists, uh, you know, physiotherapists, acupuncturists, you named it. It was a, a regular basis that I was, you know, going to them for treatment. Um, I, I used to also, uh, just before the pandemic, I only started resistant training at the age of 42. But when I, you know, start something, I kind of go full in. <laughs> I was working out five to six times a week. And, uh, but it was just, and then my, my son was a competitive swimmer. My daughter was a competitive paddler. My husband was traveling. So I really had no time and then going to the gym, even though I made time for it, I was constantly feeling guilty. And then every once in a while, you know, every few months, I still would have to go and see, um, my healthcare team for treatment. But now, now, so the bottom is about now. Now I really just work out two times a week with this 10X method. I have more energy. I always sleep through the night. I don't, I used to have the perimenopausal uh, symptoms, the common ones like uh, hot flashes, night sweats, um, lots of hair loss, dry skin, um, you know, anything, you, you name it. I don't have any, like not able to sleep uh, was one, um, but now I don't have any of those symptoms. Um, through what I've done. So this is just to show a little bit of, you know, why the 10x uh, method, the workout method worked. Um, even though I was going, you know, to, to the gym five times a week to now only really two times and 15 minutes each time. So those are my results. I started in January 2021 to well, I'm still doing it now, but this is the results where I was able to track for one year. And you can see even in my second month in, in February, because, you know, it was a drastic change going from five to six times a week to like two times a week. I gained some weight, <laughs> but then you can see, but I, I stayed with it uh, consistently throughout the year. Then you can see and really just doing the two times a week, my body composition has changed. Um, so, you know, it's not always about drastic results. It's about how you can do it consistently and to incorporate that into part of your life to continue to do that. And these are just some of my before and after photos that I whenever I remember to take. Um, so you can see in June, that's in the middle of my 10x training. So that's a, a further uh, time period apart, June and November, you can see my body composition change. And really, in the entire year, I only lost about five pounds. I didn't lose more than five pounds if you're just looking at the scale. But my body composition, because I got DEXA scan done, you know, I went from 25% uh, body fat to 23% body fat over the year. <clears throat> so that took a long time. It, <clears throat> it's not something, you know, and this is why, you know, in my newsletter, I kind of mentioned it's not about yo yo dieting. It's not about pushing yourself so hard and then rebound and you rebound and then you like kind of go, oh, it's too hard. I don't want to do it anymore. How can you do it, you know, consistently and and just enjoy it and do it for um, the optimal amount of time that you need to to you are able to to spend, but not like too too much time. Um, so I completed uh, three certifications. One is in hollow body, which is about holistic health. Uh, one is in 10X fitness. It's a particular exercise method. Um, and then the most recent addition uh, in December was the food matters. Uh, it's everything about food, your micro, uh, your gut microbiome and the macrobiome. So everything around us. It's, it's, uh, and this is why I'm doing the group pro program where you know, I want to always constantly to be upgrading and incorporating new knowledge that I have learned in my certification and to share them with my clients.
And these are just some of the examples um, of my client results. You know, you can see this is uh, one of my client who is uh, uh, an actress, a performer, and she was doing the hollow body uh, fat loss. So when you're able to see the numbers, it's because they were able to do DEXA scan, which is optional. It, it doesn't mean everyone needs to do that, but that's, this is how I can measure everything and tell you exactly how much fat, you know, you have lost. Um, and how much muscle you've gained. And you can see like on her, you know, she is young, but she had a real, really re uh, irregular schedule for sleeping and because she's an actress, right? And performer sleeping, uh, when to eat her meals and stuff like that. She still managed, and like sometimes they would have 10, 12 hour rehearsals, um, things like that. So, but she still managed to lose the weight and the fat. Um, and she, she had her own workout regimen. So I didn't have to, you know, teacher 10X, I, I didn't want to change it, it. So my philosophy is not really about changing what you already enjoy doing. Rather, I'm here to work with you and see what you can incorporate and perhaps what you can eliminate. And then you can see my um, uh, client in the middle here. Um, she actually recovered from a hip fracture surgery. Um, and she had done uh, about six months of rehab before joining the program, the 10X program, because that's what she was kind of looking to do. She wanted to increase her strength um, more and to be able to do things, you know, uh, functionally wise, you know, like not, not so much of a issue going up and down the stairs, for example, before that was her issue. And, and my client on the right, She's a teacher and she was actually, when she started the program, it was in the summertime. So she had lots of, uh, and that's what I mentioned. She had lots of summer plans, you know, get togethers with families, going to a retreat, um, but she still managed. I mean, there were times, you know, she obviously wants to enjoy herself because her family's around or people are coming to visit. Um, she still managed to release um, 2.6 kilos of, of fat. So that's tremendous. And, and being able to stick to some of the new habits and, and routines that we established together, you know, it is, I, I'm just going to say bravo. And, and what I'm putting here is real time. Like I said, you know, it's not like if you look at a lot of the, um, uh, promotions uh, about health and fitness program, do they really tell you exactly the time? I mean, I know they always show before and after, but how long did it take the person to lose that weight or to look that way? And is it when they say it's a short time? Okay, so what happens after? Have they, cons you know, stayed with a routine? Or is it just the one time I'm going to beat it so I look good in this photo? Um, and then afterwards, I don't care because I'm just doing it for the photo, you know, because we see that a lot, right? In actors and actresses, we see them fluctuate. They train for um, particular movies and then they are not, you know, looking the same whatsoever. So here I am and, and you know, like the uh, coaches on the call, we're all here trying to, you know, help people to take the power back. How can you stay consistent? And it doesn't mean you need to spend a lot of time. We're always trying to find the optimal way, the most efficient way to do something. And that's what we we humans do, right? We, we humans are always trying to find ways to do that. And as technology, as more knowledge uh, that we learn, we can do that better. And, and 10X, hollow body, these methods are just one of the latest uh, technology, uh, scientific, scientifically based methods that, you know, we're here to share with people. Um, are you ready to talk a little bit about your experience in the, <laughs> you're on mute. Sure, I'm ready to speak. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Well, that was hard to see myself. <laughs> I'm just gonna start with you that. Well. <laughs> I've never been on a, a, a Google Meet call with that happening, but. It's all, I think that's the piece we'll all start with is that, you know, that whole honesty of just being real with what you, who you are and um, really looking holistically at your life and, and just being, just being okay and at peace with, with this piece of who you are right now in this moment. I think having um, that, I, I really appreciated um, the inner success that I felt from that program with Nancy. I, I felt a sense of, um, losing that feeling that I have to conform to something on the outside and it was there's an outer success and there's an inner success I think that we're we're really conditioned to being successful and appearing a certain way 
but um, with Nancy, it was very organic. It was very in, inner, a lot of inner growth. And I was really able to reflect on my relationship with myself and the choices that I make. Um, it really helped to, to, um, to, to, to track food. I wasn't as, as committed as I like to be with tracking my food, but I think um, it really helped to, uh, to meet with Nancy and the calls with Nancy helped me to reflect as to why I, I'm doing this and, and to re reflect on my behavior and my lifestyle choices and, and, and relate differently to the choices that I was making every day. I, I came to this with a very high blood pressure, uh, very high anxiety um, from my work. I'm an elementary teacher and I, ha I, was, it, it, I was going through something at the time and, and it was really good for me to, to come to terms with some of these realities of, of how stress relates to food and how um, it was not so much about um, the losing weight for me as you can see, I, I did not release a lot of, of weight. It was more about the inner, um, that relationship with myself and why, the whys that I was making these choices. And then um, uh, also the functional movements, like how important it is to move just and to help how that helps your digestion. So uh, Nancy was able to take all these, these things that, that are valuable to me and, and pieces of my, my, my habits and my life and my personality and really work it all, the science of it into um, a program that really worked for me. Um, so I, I, I have to say, and I'm, I'm genuinely saying this about Nancy, she was, I'm not trying to sell you Nancy, I'm just being really honest about <laughs> that, that you really were a, a wonderful um, coach. And uh, I really feel like I've gained inner success and I've been able to sustain really better habits since then and i haven't been receiving nancy's coaching i've been really i've masked i've not haven't mastered but i've been very um, consistent with my choices and um incorporating really really healthy routines into my life have when i wake up i go for a walk just having a routine of walks having um the intermittent fasting was really really um which you will learn about uh was i learned a lot from from nancy and and of the the amount of calories and energy in in and energy out this was all very very scientific for me i'm not a numbers person and nancy was able to interpret numbers and, and help me understand that and having those hard facts and those reports was also very useful for my the sense that it was making to my the way i was feeling so it was good to have that scientific side of it and also that that um, human um, emotional um, lifestyle side of it. Because prior to this, it was all kind of flaky, kind of, I'm gonna meditate, I'm gonna starve myself, I'm gonna, it was very restrictive. And so it was very ironic that this piece with, with Nancy was very much adding. It was like, it was almost like I had to, I did have to eat more. I had to eat more of proteins and more of good fats. And it was, it was actually really good news. So I, I was really able to, I've been able to sustain that and I'm still, looking good <laughs> so i feel really good it's about how you feel right so and that was just amazing with nancy you know so you know you have to put a lot into this like you have to give in order for nancy to come back with to you right um and i know that i'm very generous of that as you can tell <laughs> i like to talk a lot nancy is an incredible listener um, but she always is good at refocusing what I'm saying to the point of what we're talking about and getting to the numbers and getting to the, the heart of what this is all about and why I'm doing it. So I commend you, Nancy, and I want to work with you again on the Optimist Group 10X program. Um, and I'm really excited to do that. So I want to I want to get into a bathing suit and and take another one of those photos <laughs> and be on this call like maybe in a year. I don't know. You can I've do got it. Goals, so you've yes. been motivated. Oh, thank you so much, Mary. Um, you you should really be very proud. I think if people can see your result and it's not forced, it's not a yo-yo diet. No. I'm gonna just you know no, not eat for yeah. yeah. So you should be really proud. And and then with the busy schedule you had in the summer, you still release. I know, you know that. lots of family time. I still. Like that's the thing. I was I was still allowed to live my life. Like it, it's like it's like it's crazy what you think that you take away things and you think that this is healthy. 
this is not healthy. It's about understanding that things are in moderation, but you're having, you know, the, the ratio of things in your life and it's bringing in the balance and you know, the wise as to why you're doing it. So that I did have a drink, a, a pint of beer and, and I, I do have a glass of wine and, but it's, it's very, very mon monitored. And, and that's, and it's based on my choices and, and my lifestyle. So I feel like I own it more. And it's it's very empowering. I feel very empowered. So it's that's very awesome. Helpful. That that's the whole point about you know I, I think you know Patrick and Joyce who are Hollow Body and Ten X coaches can really agree on all of this. It's we are here to empower people. It's not a, a, not about restrictive eating. Actually, it, all the tracking, all these things, really is to give you some basic foundation and structure for you to actually have more freedom in yes. your life. Um, and so. Yes, yeah, so I'm control. It was the it was I felt more in control, even though I had to do things to do it. I felt more freedom because I was more in control. So mm -hmm. yeah, you wonderful. helped build that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And mm -hmm. now we'll have Esther, who's uh, my client from Newfoundland, joining in from Newfoundland. Um, she yeah, I won't I won't say anything. I will let you talk. <laughs> Esther. Talk, you did the talking. <laughs> no, no, please go ahead, Esther. <laughs> Oh, well, I could I could do a little talk and I just want to say she is amazing. She is such a pleasure to work with someone who had recently recovered from hip fracture, uh, oh. hip fracture surgery that she is so optimistic. And she's always, you know, joining the call with a big smile. And even though she said, I'm so old, why are you using all this technology with me? I don't know. What am I supposed to do? But look, now she's on a Google <laughs> yes. call. And, uh, you know, Yes, it's amazing. So, but I don't want to say too much. People okay. want to hear from your own experience. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Then. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. This, this, all this, all this computer stuff. You know, it's in the beginning. I was completely overwhelmed. I didn't know what to do. You know, Telegram and Messenger and whatever else, WhatsApp, and now all of a Google Docs and Google Mail and Google this and Google that. I had no idea. So you know, I knew I knew what WhatsApp was, and and I didn't know Telegram, but uh, you know, anyway. So that that was a big learning curve for me, and um, and also all this information that was being thrown at me. You know, I had to read this, I had to read that, I had to watch this video, I had to. I was like, oh my goodness gracious! So that that was a real challenge for me, I have to say. You know, and uh, actually the, the exercises, that was the, the cherry on top. That was the easy part for me. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah, so it's good. So, you know, I, I, and, um, I made a few notes here. Uh, yeah, so I had, I had done some exercising, uh, you know, in years past on my own and, and, and I had joined curves at one point and then I fell off a ladder and had to stop that. Anyway, so, you know, off and on, I had been doing some exercise and I always made sure that I, I walked every day. So I, I, in that respect, it was pretty good. But I, uh, the last five years or so, I had started having problems with my hip. And uh, anyway, long story short, then I came across uh, Nancy and, uh, and so we decided to do this program and uh, about a few weeks into the program, <laughs> I broke my femur. So that was great timing. And uh, so, so I ended up in the hospital, obviously, and, and they did surgery and, and all that stuff. And well, hold on, hold on, Esther. I just want to say it's not because of the program. It's not because of 10X, okay? <laughs> no, <laughs> she fell and slipped, right? <laughs> no, you know, like there's, it's snowing and it's raining and it's snowing and it's raining and it's snowing. In and Newfoundland, it's up yes. again. So I went for a walk in my street. And no, I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> anyway, so I fell in my street. And and Nancy, she was I, I got more messages from her when I was in the hospital than from anybody else. She really cares. And it, it, it was so important to me to have that. Coming a little bit emotional now. Anyway, fast forward six months later, uh, I have to say that the the uh the surgery helped me with my hip problems. <laughs> it was meant to happen, I guess. And so then I was ready to start up again with Nancy. So we did. 
and it the the the, the it has been amazing and i feel you know before I, I would go for a walk and I would walk for 20 minutes and that was it i couldn't really do it very much more now i walk for well i as uh, mary was saying first thing in the morning i go for my 20 minute walk and i sit on a bench overlooking a, a nice lake here and i meditate and i go back home and have my breakfast and then later on in the, in the day, I go for another walk for an hour or longer sometimes. And no problem, right? No problem whatsoever. So, and I feel so much stronger. And when I walk, I, it's not like, I, I used to be like this a little bit, but now I feel really upright and I feel strong and I, there's a bounce in my step now. So it, it feels really, really good. And uh, the other thing that I had no idea was what she was going to do with me is the uh, the food intake. Now I've been always being very careful of of e you know eating the right thing, and I thought I was eating the right things, but no. Well, I, I am in a way, but uh, I, I was eating too much in the way of carbohydrates, and so she made me really realize that, and I was really resistant to changing that. Uh, so you don't tell me what to eat, you know, I like, I know what I want anyway. So, but she, she then she is, she, she pushes you without being pushy. And that, that's, a, that's a real, that, a, absolutely. You know, I don't like being pushed around, uh, but she somehow or other did it. And it, it's really hard to change habits, of course, as we all know, but she managed to do it. And I, so I managed to do change a few habits that I had. And, um, so I'm eating much more healthily now and uh, I I feel so much better and I feel like like I I'm gonna go to Europe in a few months and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna travel and I'm you know and I'm, I'm gonna have a little backpack on my back you know and I feel like I can do that now whereas before you know yeah I would go to well, I am European as you can probably hear so and my daughter lives in Ireland I, I grew up in Amsterdam but anyway she, she lives in Ireland so uh, so I'm going to visit her again, and this time I, I visited her last like a year and a half ago, and I couldn't go very far. I, you know, it was always you know after 20 minutes or so I had to sit down, and anyway, but now I'm just can I can go anywhere with her, you know. So, so it's really changed my my quality of life, and I feel that I can do a lot more things, and I'm looking forward to the rest of my life now. You know, before I was like. What am I going to do now? I don't know. And about three years ago, well, when COVID hit, I was forced to retire because I was a a music, a private music teacher and also a, a substitute teacher. And I thought, well, that's it. You know, I couldn't teach anymore. And I decided to retire because I was of retirement age anyway. So, and then a year after that, my partner passed away. So I was, uh, here we go again. I was, I was in a very bad uh, spot and 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 then I broke my femur so and it has been it's been a roller coaster three years, but I uh, and you know I feel uh, I feel like yeah uh, there's life after all this right, and uh, and I'll I'll be I'll be okay and anyway so and and now this week I started the other the finesse program, um, so uh, so I finished up ten x and uh, it, well finished in a way, but I'm still doing it, of course. And uh, and now I started the 10X Finesse program, program because I want to be as healthy, healthy uh, physically as I can possibly be. So, and, and Nancy is such a wonderful teacher that uh, it's gonna be a blast and I'm gonna be in great shape. So, right, you know, I, I could probably I have all, kind, all these notes here. Uh, anyway, so there were a few, this measuring of my food intake, just like Mary, I didn't like that at all. It was horrible. So, so, you know, I'm not like that with numbers and I don't care, you know, but I did it because Nancy asked me to. So, <laughs> I hope I'll never. For a week, right? Really? Yeah, technically, like, oh my God. <laughs> figure things out and uh, oh, never mind yeah so 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 i so i started the training program at home and i, I felt really good about it i didn't want to go to the you know to work out at the ymca you know i don't like that you know, I, I thought i'll be at home and i'll be fine and nobody can watch me nobody sees me right <laughs> but, <laughs> but then after about 
I don't know, six weeks or so, I thought, well, yeah, yeah. I, I, I had to in, I had to get more weight and invest like two hundred dollars or four hundred dollars, whatever it was. I don't know. So, I, yeah, four hundred dollars in, into getting more weight. So I thought, no, I don't want it. No. So I'll just go to the gym. So I did, and uh, which cost me four hundred dollars a year. So, and plus, you know, I, I can use all the machines and all their weights and all that stuff. So I, I got over that, and and uh, and I'm going to the gym now twice a week, and it's not there's nothing to it. It's like I go there, it takes me five minutes to get there because I live in a small town. Everything is five minutes away. I go there and do my workout. Oh, hi, oh, bye, see you. You know, and, and usually I don't see anybody because I go on a, at a time and there's hardly anybody there. So so it, it's fine. You know, I go just go there and 15 minutes later, see you next time, you know, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, so it was it's it's been really, really, really great. And Nan is a fantastic teacher. Fantastic. I don't know what Thank else to say. Thank it. you. Thank oh, you, you, Esther. <laughs> yeah, everyone should really applaud Esther. Like, I mean, she's going to be 70 very soon with her recovery and, you know, doing the workout consistently. She hasn't stopped oh. and going from home to gym. Really, it's not that intimidating now that you know what you do, what you need to do, right, yeah. to create that stress adaptive response in your body. So um, I see we have Mike here today, but I, I'm not going to put you on the spot. I just, I'm just happy to see someone who's able to join the call because we were having some issues uh, people couldn't get in. Um, but I, I want to bring a male perspective from Patrick, who is a fellow uh, hollow body and 10 coach who's located in Ajax, actually. So I brought him in today just in case we have any male callers. And we do have Mike that I can show, which is incredible. So Patrick, if you want to tell us a little bit about your own personal experience with hollow body and, and 10 and why, you know, we, we kind of know why we want to be coaches now, but just the experience that you had when you went through the program. Yeah, thank you, Nan. Uh, just first off, thank you. Truly grateful that you asked me uh, to be part of this call. So honored and grateful to help uh, in any way possible. So uh, I saw the programs and I I'm like, I'm like, where where do I sign up? <laughs> so I think they're great. Um, I'm a I'm a 43 year old triathlete. I have uh, two kids. Uh, I've done any all the distances, like uh, from try try to Ironman. So. I, I'm I'm heavy into cardio, so that that was my intro into like uh, when I was 25 years old, uh, a little round, and I wanted to lose some weight. Uh, I thought running was probably the cheapest uh, like uh, thing to do, just get a pair of running shoes and go. Uh, but I I, I like uh, I don't know if you ever heard the term skinny fat. Uh, I still even though I lost weight, I still carried a lot of body fat. Um, and that, that's what like interests me in like the, the 10X program. I'll talk about 10X in a sec, but I'll, I'll just uh, touch on hollow body for one moment. Uh, what I got out of hollow body and like coaching it, um, it is, is more self-awareness. And, and I think uh, like Esther kind of talked about it, like uh, more Mary, uh, but it, it, it just uh, allowed me to, to be more gentle on myself. Like we're, we're very critical. Uh, we, we tend to point the finger at the, like everything that we do wrong. Uh, and like when I was running, I was running away from something. I was running away from being that fat guy. I was running away from, you know, the, the, the person that I saw in the mirror. Uh, but like after doing that kind of program and like, you, I think Mary said it for healing from within and, and really knowing the person within and liking that person in the mirror. Uh, and then running to something as opposed to running away from something. So I think that's uh, kind of that sums up hollow body for me. It's a lot more than that, but I'll talk uh, about 10X just a bit. Uh, for me, 10X, I, I do train 10X. Uh, I've been doing it for over a year now. And, and it's not like, uh, I'll tell you what it's not. It's not about being the, the strongest person or the biggest bodybuilder. You're not gonna be Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, you know, when you do 10X. Uh, but you are gonna like because of, like there's there's tracking and, and measurable stuff that you like uh, the stuff that you want you know what I mean like uh, for longevity like that's what Nan said uh, in the beginning of her presentations longevity is like we all want to live a long life but what's the sense of living long if we're not healthy so like some of the measurables that like uh, again sometimes you don't see it in the mirror and like uh, you hey why am I not 
uh, you know, like super fit to like, but you, there's something that biochemically, like biomechanically that's happening inside that is measurable in 10X that like you can track and that's the, your blood sugar, uh, like a prevention of diabetes. And then there's a blood uh, uh, blood pressure as well. So I had high I had, I had high sugar and high blood pressure, which I didn't know before I started 10x. And just doing these exercises helped me lower both those numbers. So like grateful for that. Um, so again, you're not going to be the the biggest strongest guy maybe in the gym, but you're going to have a quality of life and longer life uh, if you do 10x. So I really recommend 10x. Uh, and at the age too, I wanted to say, like Esther, I think you you said you're 69, 70 years old. In around that age, uh, but I have 14 years old. Like uh, I'm training hockey teams, so it's like from 14 to seven years old. Like I think anybody could do this, and I think everybody should be doing it. Like everybody, if you have a body, you should be moving. Our bodies are meant to be moving. And I'll just give you, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on a little bit of my whys and like uh, just a, like my emotional stuff that I, why why it's important for me to live a healthier, longer life. One of them, uh, a few of them is like uh, my daughter. I want to walk my daughter down the aisle. I, I want to be able to play with my grandchildren, you know, and have that energy. But I also like my, my biggest one is probably just lead by example. I have a 12 year old and a, a nine year old, a 12 year old son and actually he's 13 uh, and a nine-year-old daughter and i just want to lead by example i want to show them that they you know dad's living a healthy lifestyle and like it, they they don't really listen to what you say they they live they do what you do so i want to just lead that healthy lifestyle and be that example for them and and i'll just close um uh my mom passed away last year uh, not last year well it was last year at this point it's last month so it's very fresh um and like to uh, my condolences to Esther too, and, and uh, when you said that, um, she she was a blessing. You know, she was a blessing in my life. She showed me uh, perseverance, determination, and like she she didn't have a lot of had like she had high cholesterol, and like her her last like ten to fifteen years weren't great. Um, so I encourage you to. This is reversible. Uh, the, all this stuff, like the stuff that we do now, will your future self will thank you for later. And I'll leave you with this quote. Uh, it's like a person with good health has a million wishes. However, a person with poor health has only one wish. Thanks, guys. It's it's very nice. Thank you for um, your um, contribution from the male point of view and then talking about, you know, how, what kind of life we really want to lead. Um, whether it's now or even later <clears throat> in our later years, it's so important. And doing resistance training is very important as we age as well, because we start to lose our muscle mass at the age of 30. So I, I don't want to take too much more time. Thank you for being here.